Hi, Chip Tuners. It's Graham again, Gareth Morris, here with another Maximizer tutorial. Today, I'll be continuing my series of tutorials into the Maximizer instrument editor. So the first part was about buying an Atari and loading Maximizer. The second part was about the basics of the instrument editor. And the last part we did was about the buzzer. And today we're going to start looking at timer effects and specifically digi drums. So what is the basics behind what we call a timer effect? Now the Atari ST has quite a powerful CPU in relative terms. It has a 8 megahertz 16-bit processor and also it has something called a programmable interrupt generator or more commonly known as the timer. Now this timer can be set to interrupt the CPU and the CPU can then do something on the sound chip and it can do this because it's such a powerful CPU at uh, rates you can actually hear. And this is where people really started to go to town on getting some new effects. So back to the architecture diagram. Covered this part, the square wave and the noise in the first instrument editor basics. We covered the envelope generator or the buzzer in the previous video. We're going to cover this volume and the digi drums in this part. <coughs> so what happens when you play a digi drum is that it adjusts the constant volume level at an audible rate. Now there's 16 levels which translate to 4 bits. <coughs> so we can play back 4 bit samples using Maximizer. It was actually the first uh, timer effect to be discovered. Good sample rates to use are between 6 and 25 kilohertz. If you go much slower than that, then the sound is really too grainy to make much sense. And if you go too high, then you use up too much um, CPU power. So I've got an example, as always, on how this can sound. The song is another Mad Max track, and it's from the game Wings of Death, and uh, people loved this bouncy kind of digital sounding drums when it first came out, so give it a listen. Time Mad Max really found his style. It's funky and groovy, and you can see or well, rather hear that those gritty sounding drums are really driving the track. So, how can we do this in Maximizer? So, we're going to go back to the instrument editor which is here. So these are the things to be aware of with DigiDrums. So when you load your samples, you load them using this part of the instrument editor here. You need to make sure that the samples are in 8-bit signed format. And it's best if the sounds are saved as raw headerless. <coughs> So here you have a bank of eight samples, which can be used in any instruments you like. Here you choose which of the eight samples you want in your instrument. And here you select the sample rate <coughs> of the sound. Let's include some samples in our track. Uh, I'm going to go through the online help relating to DigiDrums, how to load a sample, setting the sample rate and doing the actual playback of the sound. But before we do any of that, 
I'm going to show you how to prepare the samples for use on the Atari. So I've loaded up a sample editor here. And this is a program called Audacity, which you might already have heard of. It's a free sample editor. And I think it's uh, absolutely fine for editing samples for use on the Atari ST. So let's load some up. <coughs> I've prepared two to show you. I've got a dub kick and I've got a dub snare. Let's start with the kick. There we are. We're going to put this kick drum sound as an Atari ST Digi drum. I'm going to put my headphones on so I can actually hear what's going on. So let's just show you what that sounds like. Pretty fat sounding kick drum. Now, sounds good here, but that won't sound very good when we put it on the Atari for a number of reasons. So <coughs> the first thing to note is that this is already a mono sample. If um, this was a stereo sample, we'd need to convert it into mono. And to do that on Audacity, you click here. And then you go down and you can choose mono or if that option is not available, you can convert it using these two options here. So we've just got one mono sample. Now, this is a 16-bit sample. And uh, what you can see is that it doesn't even nearly begin to use up the full uh, amplitude that is possible for a 16-bit sample. Now, you have to remember that we're going to convert this into, uh, in the end, a 4-bit sample. So it doesn't give us a huge amount of dynamic range. So we want to be able to make the best as use of that as possible. So the first thing we should do is kind of pump the volume of that up. So we select the whole waveform and then go into Effect. You can choose Amplify. And when the Amplify dialog box comes up, it already has a suggestion uh, for the maximum amplitude, which is in this case 9.7 dB. But um, if we use this value on the Atari, it will still sound very quiet and not very good. So we want to go beyond this 9.7. So to do that, you need to click here on Allow Clipping, which allows the amplitude to go past 100%. And here we've got 9.7. I'm just going to put in 12. It probably won't be enough, but it will, will get us somewhere. So just hit OK. Now you can see that that is much louder. Let's play it. Yep. That is very large sounding. Now there's a few things to note at this point. There's quite a lot of low end in the sound, uh, which may or may not work on the Atari. If when you import this you find it has too much low end, then it's quite easy to dial out some low end using the equalization here. Let's play that again. It's a nice sounding kick. Now this is at uh, 44 kilohertz. Now if you remember the slides, I said that we kind of need it to be between 6 and 25 kilohertz for it to sound good and not use up too much CPU. So I'm going to aim to set this to 12 kilohertz. So I need to adjust the speed. Now that is an option here in Audacity, but how much do I need to adjust it by? Let's load up a calculator. So here is the original sample rate, which is 44,100 hertz. Now I want to aim for around 12 kilohertz. So divide that by 12,000. So it needs to be adjusted by a factor of 3.6. So we need that as a percentage. So I'm going to multiply that by 100. It gives us uh, 
about 368%. So back to the program, again, select the waveform. And when I go into effect, what I want to do is change speed. And here, you want to adjust this percentage change. I've already put the 368 in. Now when I apply that, you notice the waveform is a lot shorter and it sounds a lot more high pitched. But don't worry because when we play this at the slower rate on the Atari, it's going to sound like the correct speed. So let's export that sound now. I'm going to File, Export. Now you want to choose here the correct type. So you pick other uncompressed files. Then here in options, you need to choose from all of this raw headerless. And then you need to choose signed 8-bit PCM. And then I'm going to call this dubkick.raw, R-A-W. And I'm going to save that. So that can now be loaded on the Atari. Let's quickly do the other sound as well. Close that dub kick. And I'm going to open the dub snare. Let's play that. OK, this has a little click at the end, which we can edit out. But as you can also see, this is very low volume compared to what we could do. So I'm going to select the whole thing, amplify. Here it's saying 6.4 is the recommended maximum. We want to boost it even more than that. And it's going to put 9 in here. It feels about right. Uh, allow that. Right, that click at the end needs removing. We can zoom here at the end of the sample. And there is a little bit of sound at the end, which we can simply remove by selecting it and pressing the delete key and that's gone so now when we zoom out and play the, this again it won't click perfect now again we want to adjust the sample rate uh, just for fun, let's choose a different sample rate. So this is again 44, 100 hertz. I'm going to resample this to 15 kilohertz. Here is this program, the calculator, 44, 100 divided by 15,000. To get a percentage, we multiply by 100. So that needs to be 294% uh, adjusted in terms of the speed. So select that whole thing, change speed. And here we can put the 294 that we just calculated. Press OK. Obviously that squeezes it up and it makes it much more high pitched. Sounds a bit like a hi-hat. So we'll export that. Again, uncompressed, other uncompressed files, options, raw headerless, side 8-bit PCM, dub snare dot raw, and press save. Now that is now ready to load into Maximizer. So I'm going to copy those onto a disk and put them on the Atari, and I'll see you in a moment. Here is Maximizer. Let's load in those samples. Uh, but before I do, I want to show you something on the online help that you can refer to. As you probably remember from the previous videos, the online help is reached by simply clicking help. Now, what we want here is to look at the mixer sequence, which is MYM. And then we can scroll across. All right, here we are. So the final column in the mixer sequence, we've covered the noise, the square, and the buzzer in the previous videos. 
the last column is for the timer. Now we can put here four different values, zero for off. There's two other numbers here for some other effects. Today we're looking at digi drums, so if you put a D in the timer, you can enable the digi drum. Now, notice that this is completely independent of these other components to the mixer, so you can experiment by overlaying square wave and noise into your kick drum sound or whatever digi drum you have. But I'll leave that to you. So let's go and load a sample. This is the Diddy John part. So I'm going to click load. Uh, here are some samples, the ones that we prepared. Let's start with that kick drum. I'm going to hit OK. Now, a few things have already changed. We've got this, which tells us that the loading operation was a success. And here, sample one now has a length attached to it. We can make some basic uh, editing to the sample and then we can save it or we can clear the sample. But let's load this into an instrument first and hear what it sounds like. So right click here and choose an instrument name. I'm going to put dub kick, which was the name of the original sample. Now we need to have a mixer sequence and for new mixer. Now, as I said, the last column is the digi is for the timer, and D is digi drums. So I select that and put a D there for digi drums. Snap. Now, do we hear a sound? No, of course not. Let me put my uh, headphones on so I can make sure. We first need to set the volume. N for a new sequence and then F is the maximum volume. Actually for digi drums you can uh, make them softer and quieter with this. But let's just go with that for now. Still no sound. The reason is we don't have a sample attached to this instrument. If we click this field, we can change the sample number. One is what we just loaded for the dub kick. So this should work now. Now, it's a bit high pitched and if you remember we actually prepared this sample at 12 kilohertz and it's playing it at 19 kilohertz so that's not too surprising. Let's adjust the sample rate. You can use the arrow keys for this. You'll see that you don't have amazingly fine control over that but we'll just get it as near to 12 kilohertz as we can. That's probably about the nearest. Let's see how that sounds now. Now you can hear that's very, very gritty. And it's a little bit quiet. Now there's some stuff that we can do to adjust that. This is also the extension for editing samples. So let's click there. And here, there is some things for editing the sample so we can adjust the pitch and we can also adjust the start point we can make it signed or unsigned and here we can adjust the volume so I'm going to increase the volume by one and we'll try that starting to sound better I'll increase it again now that's probably about right Now, if we increase it too far, it, it starts to distort. I'll click that a few times. Oh, that's still sounding okay. Let's do some more. Now, that's maybe too much. If it gets too much, don't forget you can always reload the sample down here. 
Now, I don't know if you remember, but I said that this sample might have too much low end, and it probably does. If I had some more time, I'd go back into the sample editor and, and take out some low end. Let's try now the snare drum. So I'm going to go down here and go to sample number two. As you can see, that's an empty sample, so let's load the dub snare. There we go. We'll load up a new instrument for this. Just right click there and, and type in a name. And this can all be exactly copied from the dub kick. So if we go for volume sequence two, mix the sequence one. Although here, we're going to choose sample two, which is the snare drum. You can see that the sample is selected here. Let's listen to that. It's a little high pitched, probably because we converted it to 15 kilohertz and we have 19 here. If we click this, we can again adjust the frequency to near 15 kilohertz. Probably there is about the nearest Let's listen to that. That's not bad. I would make it even a bit lower. I mean, I know we converted it to 15 kilohertz, but I think it will sound nice a little bit slower. Let's try that. Yeah. Now, it is a bit quiet. Uh, this usually happens because there's so little dynamic range in a four bit sample. So, I'm going to go back to the sample editor. I'm going to pump the volume a couple of steps. Let's listen to that. That's sounding better. I think we could make it even louder. That's good. Perfect. So there's two sounds that you can use in your music then. Hit the kick drum. And the snare drum. Come back next time when we continue our investigation of timer effects and we talk about the SID effect.